This is going to be part two, video two of my two-part series of doing your HF maintenance. And for me, it's going to be tower maintenance, but really it's my tilt-up mast. Now what's going to be important for us to get done in this part of the video is to secure all these wires, all these cables, and the ropes to make sure that we're good to go for tilting this back up and getting this thing back up in the air. So for me to get started here, I'm gonna make sure that everything's separated that I want separated. I need to keep it in such a fashion that when I put this thing up in the air, elements of the antenna don't get all tangled up. They're gonna, and that's just how it is, but I'm gonna try to minimize that. Now in this video, I am going to show you how we get this ready to go, and then I'm gonna show you the setup of the mast. We'll go through that in further detail later on in the video. So the first thing we're gonna do is line up all the coaxes, my Heliax and the RG8, and the control cables for the uh, rotator for the uh, cell phone booster. And so I'm using these heavy duty tie wraps, a combination of those and the smaller ones for the different components on here. I like to put the small tie wraps on top of the toroids so that my Mix 31s, the connections don't break and then they fall off during the winter. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can manage cables to get your uh, cables looking good. I like to dress the pole here so that they look nice and even. And if I had uh, some binoculars, I can scope them out on top. If I bundled them all together in a tight little wad and then secured that against there, against the pole, well, I'm not gonna be able to tell if I've got an issue, if there's something that's going on. So here, at least I have half a chance of checking out the cable because I can see all of them as they run up the pole. I don't have a bunch of them, so that makes it easier for me. Removing old tie wraps, um, during this process is a good maintenance thing so you can get uh, longer life in between maintenance periods. Now I think I'm all ready to go here. I've got all the antennas dialed in, everything checks out well. I've got all my ropes separated and retightened. I had to move this to get this out of the way. It was something that needed to be done as well. And uh, now you can see here I've got everything secured to the pole. It's looking really good. I'm happy with how it's organized. The next step is to raise this up in the air. Now if you haven't done this sort of thing before, one I guess pro tip for you to do is if you try to mount or manage your wires when they're warm, when the sun's shining on them, it becomes a lot easier to do. When they're cold, especially with Heliax here, it's more rigid, it doesn't fall into place where you want it to. Now that I've got this set here, tomorrow it's gonna be sunny, it's gonna warm these things up and they'll get right into place. I'll put a link in the description below for similar tilt over masts like this one, like I built many years ago. So this way, if you're interested in building something like this, it'll give you some ideas. Now basically how this is built is at the bottom of these two poles are a drill through section where a grade eight bolt is put through and that's matched up with the actual pole that it sits on this thing when it's in the upright position. And that's what lets it tilt over uh, to the ground. There are three brackets, quarter inch uh, plate, that are welded in the top and one at the bottom with holes drilled on the outside for additional eight grade bolts to go through. And these have a corresponding plate on the opposite side. And this is what holds the mast in place when it's in its upright position. The two poles stick out of the ground about four feet and they go into the ground eight feet where previously I dug an eight foot hole about a foot and a half wide and that's filled with concrete. To keep the center poles uh, aligned and not moving, I've got a center bracket, a quarter inch plate, which is there to keep them in place. And then I had the uh, machinist weld on a bracket, which is the winch mount plate. And I was able to drill holes for this specific winch and the hand crank winch that I had originally. So I also had those guys make me a plate that sits at the top of this thing and I used some C-clamps to hold onto it. There could have been a better design, but this has just worked for my application. What I mounted to this was a wall mount pulley that holds, I think it's 480 pounds. Now in case I want to use, let's say a PoE camera or something like that, um, and I did feed the mesh with power over ethernet with these cables. I ran a couple of Cat 5s that are shielded that go all the way up through the pole. They're the only things inside the pole and they come out through that top cap. These Cat 5s are long enough where they can go through the tube, out the top, and then mount eh, about three quarters of the way up the pole. So it gives me a lot of flexibility to put another mesh node or maybe an IP camera in the future. Over the years, I put this mast up a number of times. So I know the hassle, the heartache that's going to be the fan dipole. When you put this up in the air and you've got, at least this is one side of all the elements, Tangle City, that's all I can say. Now, I've tried a bunch of different ways to uh, not have it tangled, but I've got an obstacle here, which is this tree. 
it always comes really close to getting snagged on that. Inevitably, they tangle amongst themselves. So I gather them all together and I tape them to the mast so they're one, they're not gonna be in the way as we're putting up the antenna. And I just tape them down right here, somewhere along the way. That keeps them gathered, it keeps them out of the way so that they're not gonna get tangled with anybody as we're putting this up. And it gets rid of one of the safety hazards. So at this point, I'm ready to go. We've got this set up on both the ladders. We've got some extended heights here, so we were increasing and improving the angle. Um, so when this thing gets taken off, it won't be so hard to get it started. And because the plastic part of this fiberglass ladder is not going to be the strong part, I just use a two by six on here to give it the strength to uh, put the pressure on the outsides of the ladder. And that'll keep that from breaking. Now the little giant ladder, this thing is absolutely amazing. It's great for doing this kind of work because you can work on both sides of this ladder at the same time it's strong enough for that and it's easily strong enough to hold the weight of this antenna and have it ready for takeoff so let's get this thing secured and we'll get one step closer to getting this mast up in the air all right so i'm a little bit nervous as i always am when i'm getting ready to put this thing back up i've got some help coming over so we can reduce the load that the winch has for pulling this up we've got the battery hooked up the winch is in position We'll do some planning and wait for the wind to die down. And once the wind stops, we're ready for action. Okay, here we go. Yeah, all right, here we go. Start pushing, there you go. Hey, go easy, go easy. Okay, so the last part of this setup is I'm here on the roof. There's, there's two lines. This one here holds the mast from coming this way, and the other side of it goes into that tree. So this is the kind of maintenance I do maybe only every couple years because quite frankly, it's, it's a lot of work. The preparation, the planning, and make sure nothing gets broken in the process. But doing regular maintenance on your antennas is a good thing to do. Not only will it keep you on the air, but it'll keep your surroundings safe because things wear out. That's just how it goes. Make sure you check out this video right here if you're looking for more antenna setups and portable operating, and we'll see you next time, 73.